Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here and checking out the series. Now how this works by now. Uh, if you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. It's a new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover the new ones, all the usual spots, including iTunes and Apple Podcast. It's Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org. We're, of course, right here on YouTube for the video versions. That's me. I'm Kyle Meredith. Uh, today, I get to talk with legendary actress Harriet Walter. Uh, we're going to be talking about this uh, new Apple TV Plus series called Silo. Now, let's start with Harriet. You know her from from so many things. Lately, uh, Succession. She plays the kid's mom. Uh, she plays uh, Hannah Waddington's mom in Ted Lasso. Uh, she's been in Star Wars. She's been in the uh, what Sense and Sensibility, uh, Law and Order at UK, if you keep up with the other side of things over there. Uh, legendary actress, anyway. She's in this new show, as I mentioned, called Silo. Uh, Apple TV Plus. Uh, reading uh, what I've got here, uh, it's created by Emmy-nominated screenwriter Graham Yost, who also did Band of Brothers and Justified. Uh, it's the story of the last 10,000 people on Earth, their mile-deep home, protecting them from the toxic and deadly world outside. Nobody knows how they got there. Nobody knows the backstory. Nobody really knows what the outside is exactly like. And anybody that does try to find out uh, are met with their fate, which is death, if you didn't feel the build up to that anyway. So uh, so that's it. So just starting on Apple TV Plus, uh, it's really an incredible season. Uh, it is based off of some books. Um, the books go on. I'm hoping the show goes on myself. Uh, I'm going to be able to talk to Harriet about that and really getting into her character. She plays this character who, I mean, not only do all these people live underground, but she herself is a hermit on top of that. Hasn't come out of her little uh, apartment workshop for like uh, a quarter of a century. So plenty to go into that. And once, by the way, she also acted with uh, Roger Daltrey of The Who. So I've got to bring that up as well. All that, whole lot more. Let's get into this. We're talking Silo. It's Kyle Meredith with Harriet Walter. Hello, Harriet. Hi, Kyle. Uh, pleasure. Yeah, pleasure to meet you on here. Um, and what a joy it's been to watch you in this new series, Silo. Uh, well, you know, it's it's not a sci-fi, It's it's, but it is. It's a future thing. It's a thriller thing. It's a mystery thing. And, and so much of this has to do with world building, um, yeah. which has been fun to watch. H how does that change the acting for you, if at all? It contributes a huge amount because you don't have to do that for the audience. They can see it. You know, I come from a lot of theater tradition. And of course, on stage, um, you have to bring the outside world on stage with you. Um, you. You know, you have to say, God, it's raining out there and come in with someone's poured a bucket of water on you. But, you know, in a film, it, the environment's created for you. And you know, uh, this is exceptional in that, you know, I sort of visited the set before I got started, like about a week ahead of starting filming so that I could see the environment and imagine myself in it. And all those kind of advantages up ahead of starting were very, very helpful. And I had to multiply the, the layer that we're on, what we were filming on, I had to multiply that by hundreds and say that's all above your head crushing down on you you know and you're in this tiny little cell and you don't dare open the door is it felt like being in a submarine and if you opened the hatch the whole ocean would come in on you that that's what it felt like um and and it was and it looked so convincing you know mm -hmm. even though there were bits of green screen but for the most part it was up up there in reality and that was very very helpful yeah and that character what you're talking about i mean because it is here you have you know a civilization that's been underground now for over 100 years so you're underground but your character hasn't even left their space in 25 years yeah i think that's right yeah like how do you find the quirks of your character within that right there do you know, one of the things you cannot act as a, as a no actor can act is time. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I, I can I can produce the results in some way. I can indicate something, but I can't actually live through 25 years of that and, and convincingly convey it to you. It's impossible to portray and it's impossible for the audience to imagine. But it's obviously going to make her odd. 
Um, <laughs> so I tried to be a little odd and, and um, it's going to make her grouchy because she, she's very able to live on her own in some ways, but, but also really needs people in other ways. She needs to be part of a community. She needs to be helpful. She needs to be useful. She needs to distract herself from whatever's going on in her, um, her head that's, that's bugging her, that makes her retreat from the world. But, um, so she's a mixture of somebody who sort of is angry with people, but needs them and loves them and trusts some people really a lot and other people not at all. Um, and even though she's an ancient in terms of, she's an elder, if you like, um, in actual terms, she's never, she doesn't know what's out there and she's never been out there. And she doesn't even have ancestors who she knows who've been out there. Do you know what I mean? So she's as ignorant as, as anybody else in lots of ways, but yeah. she thinks she knows how people tick. I think she knows how people in, in, in the silo behave. That's where she's got her advantage. And it, it, it's so much fun watching you play with all of that. I mean, there, because the multitudes that you sort of like in these little small scenes, how much can peel back from that, even in your voice, like, you know, it seems like, the voice is almost a little bit childish sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. where did that come from? Uh, I, I don't know where that voice came from. It was sort of, um, in my head, it was like, it was deeper and gruffer than when I, when I heard it. And I thought, oh, well, you know, I'm used to that. You kind of aim at A and you, if you're lucky, you get at B, you know, so fine. That's what it is, what it is. And it's how you are inside that, really has the integrity, you know, that you hope and you're not going for a certain sound. You're not aiming at that sound, but, um, it, it, I think she is a bit arrested in her development. And I think everybody is a bit odd, you know, they're not quite emerged as, as, as we are, you know, we think we are there. Um, you know, there's got to be something that works on you if you've never seen daylight and, never breathed first hand oxygen, you know, it's, it, it's got to work on you in some way. And I think that, I don't know, I think that maybe I just wanted to get away from voices I'd already, you know, I didn't want to sound like me. Mm -hmm. um, something like that. It's, it's fun, uh, interesting the way you're talking about that, because I was thinking about you know, how many characters we're actually able to see you in right now all at once. <laughs> and obviously talking about successions out there and we got Ted Lasso around and and I was talking to my wife and and for a moment she forgot that that was even the same actress in these three different roles. I mean, I think I've heard you talk about that before, the importance of keeping your characters separate. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, um, yes, I don't really want to revisit stuff. I, I, I tried to go into new territory. I think that's what motivates me it interests me um so i want to explore different heads and um uh yeah i mean I, I i sometimes play with the idea supposing they all came into one room together and had dinner you know <laughs> what would the, you know lady caroline collingwood would not talk to walker she'd say go and wash your hands you know? um <laughs> i i just love thinking of things like that but actually you know, that's, that's what actors like to do. They like to do lots of, you know, different characters. I think that's what makes us, keeps us happy. Now, well, please let me throw the compliment your way when I say not everyone is successful in pulling that off in the way that you do time and time again. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. And, and it is true. And, and, and again, with all of these, like a show like Silo, and I guess I would ask the same thing about the other two with Succession and like Ted Lasso, especially with those two where we know like the series is ending. But even with this one, is it important for you to know how it's going to end? Do you ask for the whole story or do you kind of allow yourself to play along with it? Do you know, it's a big question that because in, in, in a perfect world, I would want to know where the story's ending. And that's what I'm used to having done lots of theater plays. You know, you, you know that, you know, Hamlet ends up dead and, you know, it, it's, it's kind of important in some ways to be in charge of the story. Um, in other ways, I don't think anybody does it deliberately. I think the pressures of writing mean that people haven't kind of, they're kind of, they're interweaving with what they're seeing in today's cut and imagining something else tomorrow. You know, it's going into the, into the, into the, um, 
the cooking pot, as it were. Um, but for an actor, I think, you know, I, I just say, look, on a need to know basis, I would say to Jesse Armstrong, you know, on a need to know basis, what has happened since then before I come on there? Because like, six episodes has happened from my last appearance and I don't know anything. I haven't read the scripts. So I said, what do I need to know? What does my character know? And that's fine. If I don't know the rest of it, that's fine. In fact, right. it's quite good because I might sort of fall into a trap of being too knowing about something. But I, I think uh, where I object to it is occasionally you hear about someone who, um, you know, you hear about a series where uh, nobody knew who'd done the murder. And you go, oh, that's cool. You know, the police don't know. That's going to make it very real. The police don't really know. The detectives don't know. The neighbors in the village don't know. But then they say, well, the murderer didn't get to find out till page. You, know, you go, wait a minute. If I was acting the murderer and you suddenly said, actually, you did the, you know, I would be, I'd be furious because as an actor, I would have played the whole thing differently if I'd known, you know. <laughs> that's interesting. So then it turns around and, you know, and, and, and once it's airing, like, you know, as we record this, of course, talking about succession, you know, the big episode, the big episode just happened with the death. And like, do you watch along at that point then? Of course, I watch along with everybody else um, because it's it it it's the show that keeps giving. You know, even though I know what happens, I, I didn't actually see it. I wasn't there in the room. So, you know, it's going to be a surprise and, you know. I'll probably, and then now we watch things so differently, don't we, that we can't talk about it in a certain way because we're going to, it's like I say to people, you don't want to tell people the score of the football game until they've watched the game, you know, so because you don't want to spoil it for them. So, right. Right. Only well, the secret club can have the conversation, but everybody else can't. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the big things, you know, with Silo. It's like, oh, God, how is this going to end? How is it going to end? Knowing that there are more books, too. Yeah, the, yeah. the more books that come out, it's like, even knowing how it ends doesn't mean, like, I haven't read the books, you know? So it's yeah, like the mystery of hanging on. They're The stories are contained So in silos. <laughs> I mean, this is like a, you know, it's like a complete story into itself, you know? And um, Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So for, you know, something like this, then, you know, you, you've played all these genres. And again, I don't know what I call this, you know, it's a futuristic show. It's not exactly sci-fi, but, but kind of what I do love about this genre is that prophetic nature, yes. you know, that, that sci-fi sort of lends it to yes. like, that's always out there and the way it seems like it's always sort of controlled by fear or the unknown, you know, a lot of it's so much controlling by the unknown. What do you get out of a series like this in, in that sense? Well, rather like you've put your finger on it that for you, it, it, it sort of you realize, I mean, you're able to analyze it and we can step back and we can write about it in a way that we don't find it so easy to write about our current lives, you know, because we're in the mess, we're in the middle of the mess and we can't quite see which way it's going and where I'm going to get out of, you know, who's going to get out of the mess first and will it be the good guys or the bad guys who who win in the end and we don't live our lives like that and so we need nice little package stories that give us a beginning middle and end in a way that allows us to look at our present tense and our, you know in a, with a clarity that we can't as we bumble through life you know we need these stories that kind of give an indication of what might be going on Oh my God! You maybe maybe we're all living a lie. Maybe we're all believing something is out there that's scary. Maybe you know. I mean, it's not a million miles away from everybody in in medieval times believing they'd go to hell if they did certain things wrong, you know, and they'd go to heaven if they did certain things right. It was a, w a way of controlling people, and and still we have lots of models that that echo that now. And I think all we can hope to do is to kind of be a little bit wise to what's going on and question why am I being told this and who's telling it me and what um, whose interest is it in to believe it and you know those are the questions we should ask yeah well it's a perfect kind of show especially somewhere in the future as we look back and see the types of these shows that were happening right now and sort of how they reflect I mean that's always so much yes. fun for me yes, to kind of look back on those yeah I yeah. mean and I just go out and roll in the grass and look at the sky and you know I hope that's what we'll do when we switched <laughs> off our TVs and go have a good day in the sun
Well, I know we're coming up on the time here. I'll, I'll wrap with this one too. Seeing you and Rebecca Ferguson working together, in fact, seeing how many people you, you know, all the people you've worked with over your career, I did had have to ask about one. As I'm surrounded by my music posters here, what was it like working with Roger Daltrey, oh. a big hero of mine? Oh, that's a great one. <laughs> he was so sweet. He was like, you know, I couldn't believe it was Roger Daltrey I was dealing with. Um, and, you know, we were working all day in very hot sun with stupid costumes. And he suddenly, you know, he'd say, well, I've got a gig tonight. Um, and, and, you know, I'm get, getting in this helicopter and I'm going to Leeds and we're going to do a gig. And I go, and then the next day he's coming in to do some others. He, he was so good natured. I couldn't believe it. Um, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if what you'd a... remember me. <laughs> it would be quite interesting. And I'll tell you another thing about that show. I worked with him on this thing for, for your for your listeners and viewers. It was called The Magical World of the Leprechauns. And one of the characters, I took some photos in the days when you could freely take photos without anybody saying, don't do that because it'll go on the internet. And one of the pictures was of one Kieran McCulkin. Oh, really? Who was playing an elf or a leprechaun or something. So I have a picture of him lying back on a grassy bank, looking cheeky. And um, there yeah, you are. Yeah, that's nice to have. Well, um, I love Silo. I do. I, I hope this extends and extends and extends. I love what you're doing. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. It's Thank been a real you. honor. Very encouraging. Thank you. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you. For, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.